Hello and welcome. My name is Chris. My handle is Montevaca, and this is my second in my series of Blender tutorials. This one's focusing on Blender 2.5 and using the physics to animate a hat. Um, to expand on that, uh, the idea for this came from, for some reason, me deciding that I wanted to animate a hat uh, flopping back and forth like it would flop back and forth on the Swedish Chef for the on the Muppet Show. If you guys have ever seen that, he's his head goes back and forth and his uh, hat flops back and forth with it. I have no clue why I decided I wanted to do this, but uh, I just did and tried to figure out how to do it and got something that I think is semi-close. So let's uh, show you how what I got. Um, we're going to open up Blender. This is the scene that everybody starts out with when you open up Blender. Normally we'd, we'd uh, delete this box, but we're going to actually use this box. So let's uh, keep with that. Um, first thing we want to do is, is come up here to Blender Renderer. Change it from Blender Renderer to ga Blender Game. Uh, this is a means of which to access some more robust physics. Uh, there's a couple ways that Blender does physics. But the new 2.5 version actually does fit, has this uh, Blender game uh, version, which is kind of interesting. Uh, starting out, uh, the the first cube that we're going to want to use is going to have a static physics space, which that's all what all objects start out as. So we're going to keep that. But what we're going to want to also do is come down to object object constraints and find. Uh, rigid body joint. So we're going to add a rigid body joint to this uh, cube. Let's go into wireframe so you guys can see. You can't see anything at the moment until you hit display pivot. And this will show you where anything that we connect this rigid body, body joint to is going to pivot from. And if we look at this, we don't necessarily want it to pivot from the middle. So let's try changing it to uh, under Z I want to change it to oh, just let me type it damn it <laughs> sorry uh, 1.1 1 .1. okay and that should be just above the square okay so we've got that um, before we get change I'm going to change the name of this to bottom and then I'm going to hit shift D copy and now we've got a second one, which I'm going to call mid. And before we move on, uh, before we, we're going to copy this again, but before we do, let's come back here to the physics panel. Instead of static, we're going to want to change this to a rigid body. And when we do that, uh, that adds a physics profile to this. Um, take notes. Uh, we're not going to need to do this this time, but if you ever... Uh, change the size of the squares you're gonna also want to change the radius of uh, under the rigid body this is the uh, radius of I think it's uh, just basically where it goes to check to see if something's touching it so if you change the size of the square of the cube uh, it's still gonna have a larger radius than the actual size of the cube and that could cause problems but uh, we're not necessarily gonna touch on that right now so I'm just gonna leave that alone so we're gonna do shift D make a third one come back here to the name and change it to top and it should because we copied it from that other one have a rigid body yes and we're gonna go to constraints and this top one does not need a pivot joint so we're gonna take that out we're gonna go back here to the bottom one and change the target of the pivot pivot joint from nothing to mid so it's gonna target mid and then mids uh, rigid joint is gonna to target top okay once we've got that done we can uh, run our first physics simulation and see how this is gonna work so if we hit P it does a quick simulation and that's what uh, our physics looks like at the moment um, I want to change a little bit of the position on these I'm gonna try and make them sometimes you want them slightly staggered to let them uh, flop a little bit easier um, also I think we're gonna want to separate them slightly I think that's one of the reasons let's see if this gives us a good flop yeah I like that better and so it's a slight it starts off slightly uh, more uh, 
uh, higher up, well, not like parallel or whatever, but it also I also separated the boxes a little bit. It gave us a little bit better of a flop. So once that's done, what we're gonna want to do is that's the physics simulation for uh, the animation, but we're gonna need to constrain this to a a rig and then constrain the rig to our eventual hat. So, but the first thing I want to do is just create a something that was going to represent our hat, which we're just going to do a simple cylinder for now. Uh, later on, once uh, you understand understand how to do this physics uh, simulation and then animation part, we can do a larger, uh, a more uh, hat-like model. But for now, it's just going to be a cylinder. Just keep it simple for now. See, so we want it to be kind of the same size as all this. And again, this is just going to be a giant hat. We can uh, tweak the uh, the actual dimensions of all this stuff later, but for right now, that should be fine. Now, once we've got the uh, the cylinder, we're going to want to go into edit mode, like I just did, and click uh, loop cut, uh, loop cut and slide. So. Uh, get it going uh, perpendicular to it and use your mouse wheel to make a few cuts and hit it and there we go so that's uh, done a few cuts on that if we go back to object the reason we did that is just to give it more of a flexibility when we uh, when we move it back and forth if you kept it just with one long uh, 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 square uh, going from bottom to top it's uh, it's gonna look really weird when we animate it. So once we've got that done, we've got pretty much the the model for our hat done. We're gonna pull it off to the side, and now let's uh, get started on the rigging. So we're in object mode at the moment. So what I'm gonna do is just put my 3D cursor there and do Shift A and put a single bone. I'm gonna now switch back to edit mode. Gonna make this a little bit taller. Get this about the size I want it. And then I'm gonna hit E for extrude and extrude another bone out. Then E for extrude and extrude another bone out. Okay, so we now got three bones in about the right place. You want, I'm trying to line them up with the uh, the boxes here. Again, this is uh, the way I've decided to rig it. There's a number of ways you can rig it. You don't actually need to necessarily have the armature be uh, all parents of each other, but uh, it works for the way I've done it. Um, uh, have fun, play with it a little bit. Okay, so once we've done that, we're gonna wanna change into uh, the pose mode and come over here to bone constraints. And the constraint I'm going to use for this is the inverse uh, kinematic constraint. I've also seen people use uh, copy location and copy rotation. Uh, this tutorial is kind of a derivative of some other tutorials I've been watching that have uh, been doing ragdoll animations. And uh, they did a lot of copy uh, rotation and copy roca location. Um, I didn't necessarily. I don't necessarily want it to be rotating with it and doing a few things. So I'm just going to use this inverse kinematic function. It seemed to work for what I wanted to do with it. Um, you guys are welcome to try other things. So uh, for this bottom bone, I've added a inverse kinematic kinematic constraint to it, and we're going to target the bottom box with that. And then we move up to the middle bone. We're going to add a inverse kinematic constraint, and we're going to target the middle box with that. When this happens, when you do that, it's going to really screw up the armature. That's because you also need to change the chain length to one just to keep it from, basically the chain length defines how how many uh, bones actually affect, uh, are affected by the, uh, the inverse kinematic constraint. And if you keep it at zero, it basically says that every bone starting from this bone down is affected uh, is affected by it. So you, we want to just to be only affected by that bone to be affected by uh, this kinematic constraint, not any others. So now we go up to the last bone. We're gonna add one more kinematic constraint. Uh, change chain length now so that we don't have to mess with that. And then hit top. Okay. So our our rig is now constrained to the actual physics. And we're going to go back into object mode. 
and with the rig selected and then the uh, the hat selected we're gonna parent them to each other oh but we need to select the hat first then the rig so hit control P and then we're gonna parent it with automatic weights oh wait actually we probably want oh control Z before we do that almost screwed up uh, let's get the hat into position so that the the weights are played correct applied correctly okay so now we do control P with automatic weights and it kind of already deforms it slightly once that's done we can hit oh one last thing before we do anything else uh, take the hat we're gonna want to come over to the physics tabs of the hat and change it to no collision because that could that's gonna affect the physics simulation that we run if it has collision on it so once that's done we hit P oh wait before we do anything else we come up here to game and hit record animation that's important and then we hit P to for it to run the physics simulation and so our boxes are now affected by gravity and come down for a second kind of flop a bit and if we hit escape let's get it into a good view because they fell this way um, and now hit let's go into solid view and I'm gonna hide the boxes as well so that we can have a good view of this and we play now our hat should flop like the boxes do which is cool um, this is nice but we kinda wanted uh, the next thing we want to do is have the head bob back and forth and have that affect the flop so Hey guys, uh, my video ran a little bit long, so we are going to cut this up and continue it in part two. Thanks.